Dane Camella, it's great to have you here on Charisma, and we are going to get lit with prayer today. I love that you are using your platforms on social media to really make an impact for the kingdom of God through just simply praying with people, praying for people every day. It's wonderful. So welcome. It's great to hear your story today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on, John, and uh, super excited to have a conversation with you today. Yeah. So, Dane, I kind of want to give people the context of what it is that you're doing on a day to day basis that, that they're not familiar with you. So tell us how God is using you in social media. Yeah, definitely. And I think when we think of like Christianity, ministry and all these things, we can make it extremely complicated or it has to look like something uh, specific and you know, for me, all I'm doing on social media is really making short form videos across the different platforms to share a message of faith, hope and encouragement. So every single day, I'll just share a prayer one or two times a day just to encourage someone out there. It started during the pandemic and, you know, God really put it on my heart to share my faith. And I didn't feel necessarily qualified of what that was supposed to look like. But through some time with him and just asking the question, well, if I could share my faith, what what could that look like? The answer was prayer, because that's really where my relationship with God started. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to your relationship with God in just a moment. But I kind of want to build this out a little bit more. So you are a couple times a day, you're posting these short form videos, just praying. Mm -hmm. um, I got to hear some testimonies because, I mean, I, I know people have done like prayer videos now and again. Um, but you are consistent. You're doing it all the time. I mean, you, you've got TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. It's everywhere. Uh, tell us some testimonies and what you're seeing God do. Yeah. And, you know, in the beginning, we were just reaching a couple hundred people. I didn't jump on TikTok and make a video and it went viral overnight, like how, you know, many stories occur. It was just consistently sharing a message that really meant something to me. And I found even in the beginning, people really were encouraged because they felt like they didn't know how to pray or they had to pray mm -hmm. a certain way. And just being able to kind of partner with someone whenever they saw a video of mine to be able to come and pray with me was that first kind of testimony. Like, thank you so much. Like I have been struggling in my prayer life and you've helped me understand it doesn't have to be like this or have to be like that. But I think even the bigger testimonies that I've seen now over four years is people finding Christ, people getting into mm -hmm. church because the message that I was sharing wasn't to condemn them or, you know, to say something that they're not good enough. It was just to encourage them. And we've had, I don't know, hundreds of te testimonies of people getting back into church, people rededicating their life to Christ, people coming to know Christ, as well as just people sharing their own personal testimonies. Mine has to do with mental health. And I've seen so many or at least read stories of people saying they've been healed from this, whether it was something with their mental health or something that they were battling, whether it was an addiction or something like that. So the simple act of just encouraging people through a simple prayer has really opened my eyes to that's something that's needed uh, today mm -hmm. and is, I think, always going to continue to be needed. Why do you think it is that people have a hard time with prayer on their own? Why do you think they need that that encouragement or that example? I think people have a hard time with prayer because it is something that's so personal, right? That's how we build our personal relationship with the Lord. And because of that thought, they think it has to sound a certain way or it has to have certain words within it when at, at the simplest at least in my mind, it's just talking to God. It's telling mm -hmm. him what you're going through. It's it's a relationship, right? We're supposed to build a relationship with Jesus. And I think some people sometimes overcomplicate it because they might see a video of mine or someone else's, or they'll hear when they go into church, people pray powerfully from stage. And that's their context to what it has to be. But if you just bring it back to it's your personal relationship, it's you talking to God about what you're going through, it's you thanking him for what he's done in your life and being able to also just pull scriptures from the word and speak those over your life. I think a lot of the prayers that I'll do just because I'm in the word so much is I'll speak and pray scripture over my mm. life and for the person watching, giving them the opportunity to go, hey, it's not always about the words that you have. You can simply take a scripture in God's word, pray it over your life. You could simply sit there and thank him for the great day he's given you, right? A lot of people will talk about gratitude journals and stuff like that. I mean, we can talk to the God of the universe and thank him for everything that he's done in our life. And we don't even have to necessarily ask him for something if that's if, if you feel weird about that. So it's just a conversation. And I really try to make it 
as simple as possible for people. And then I think over time, them being able to see other people do that gives them a little bit more confidence to do it for themselves. Yeah. So just being that example for people has opened up people's expectation or maybe lowered their expectations and made it more accessible. And maybe that's yeah. a better way to put it. So how did prayer, uh, cultivating a, a lifestyle of prayer uh, happen in your life? Yeah. So I grew up in the church. My mom is a really strong Christian. And one of the things that she wanted us all to do was go to church with her. She didn't really force her beliefs on us. Even though we were all believers, we didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. And it wasn't until I was probably 18 years old where I started to dive into my faith. And one of those first things that was at least easy for me to gravitate towards was prayer because it was a conversation. I could talk to God about what I was going through. And that was kind of the foundational thing that I could do throughout my day. I could do it through journaling, which I did for years, which helped me just kind of mm -hmm. process with what I was going through. But then as I started to dive into God's word and find those scriptures to hold on to, whether it was a scripture for you know, healing or a scripture for faith, I could memorize that. I could talk to him. I could speak that over my life. It really kind of changed my mood. It, it set the, the course of my day and it gave me a lot of hope because there's so much uh, power in God's word. So just the repetition of starting to do it and then letting God work on my character, give me more wisdom to understand, you know, what it is that he's put on my heart really has just been that thing that's never left. And that's really where it started for me. And then obviously Bible study and everything else, praise and worship came um, as a result of that too. Yeah. So I know that healing, uh, like prayer, uh, healing came through prayer in your life as well. Can you, can you tell us that story? Yeah. So when I was 22 years old, I just like, I started to get some attacks on my life and I was growing in my faith, but I was early in my understanding of God's word. I didn't understand my authority. I didn't necessarily know how to put on the full armor of God or understand how to rebuke the enemy. And some of those lies that were coming and just my mind was starting to just be a little bit different. And I didn't know what was going on and my family could see it, but they didn't know because again, mental health is still uh, so misunderstood. So just through all of these things that were happening, what, what ended up happening is I had a manic episode and mm. it got so bad to the point where I was delusional and I had to be hospitalized because of what was happening. So it was in my, I know mental health is sometimes hard to understand whether it's like uh, passed down in your family, or I believe we live in a spiritual world. And I believe it was an attack on my life just because of the, the warfare that I saw and just the evil that was going on when I was going through that. So I had to spend two weeks in a hospital. They gave me so much medication just to bring me down because the doctor even told my mom, we thought, you know, your son was gone and we had to like bring him back. So they had to sedate mm -hmm. me so much. And through that experience, I, I almost had this like spirit of fear come on me. Like I was so distant from God because I felt like he abandoned me. I'm, I was sitting there going, why did this happen to me? It was, it was so hard to understand. And, you know, when I got out of the hospital, I went to a Christian psychiatrist. They did a brain map on my brain and they physically showed me with the evidence of how it can show what's going on in your brain that I had uh, severe bipolar disorder one and that I would have to be on I think at the time I was taking three different medications. They said, there's no cure for this. Like you're going to have to be on this if you want to not have this manic episode happen again and maintain some normal uh, life. And I had a really strong mom in my life still do today who she kept reinforcing my faith saying, this isn't going to be the rest of your life. Like you can be healed from this. And, you know, through her and some amazing people in my family, just, you know, praying for me and helping me get back into the word and understand that God is a healer. I started to believe that too. I said, this isn't going to be the rest of my life. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I believe that God can heal me. And I don't think, I never really took on that identity. I think with mental health, a lot of people take on the identity of what they are, right? You are this, and this is going to be the rest of your life. But I knew my identity lied in Christ. And I knew there was freedom in that and freedom from something that God didn't intend for my life. And just through making that decision and continuing to pray and believe that I could be healed, we went to a church service. It was probably two or three weeks after I got the diagnosis at the psychiatrist's office. And it was a church that I started going to where my relationship started when I was 18 and they did an altar call at the end. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. My mom looked over me and she said, you should go up for prayer. And I mm -hmm. said, yeah, I definitely should. I went up right to the front. The pastor and his wife were there. 
uh, I put my hands on them, their hands, and they started to pray for me. And I had never experienced like healing or just anything supernatural. And when they started to pray for me, my hands started to shake. I didn't even, I didn't know what was going on. And almost like I was making like a weird noise out of my mouth because I couldn't control like what was happening. I wasn't on the ground or anything like that, but I knew that God was moving right there. And it's so interesting because the pastor looked at me in the eyes too with a little bit of concern. So I don't know if they had ever experienced something like that, but that's the great thing about God. And uh, Jesus is he can move in your life if you believe and you come together in prayer. And after they had done, got done praying for me, I felt this thing like lift off my body. And I right then and there, I was like, I was just healed. I even remember going up to the pastor after the service just to talk to him. And he was a little like apprehensive to talk because he probably goes, they probably go through so many things and he was kind of standoffish to have a conversation and quickly, you know, went over somewhere else. But I, right then and there, I was like, I've just been healed. Like it changed my mm -hmm. understanding. I had a strong relationship with the Lord, but to see God move in that way changed everything for me in terms of really believing like God's healing is for everyone and, and he can move in your life. And yes, faith is a, an important role and it was so powerful. And within two weeks, I got off all the medication and it's been over 10 years and nothing has ever happened. And wow. it would be eight years later where God would ask me to start sharing my faith. And I think his timing is always perfect. And I think the delay in asking me to start sharing my faith was just kind of going through when you're diagnosed with something and you're healed and you share that story with people, not everyone believes you. You know, there are people who still believe, well, no, there's no cure. Like you cannot be healed. You still have it. You've just figured a way to deal with it. So I think it took a, took some time to like get through the understanding that not that I was not healed, but just to be able to share that story because shortly after starting just to share my faith, God put it on my heart to just share my testimony on a live stream one night. And it really like meant a lot to the people who were there and just to also, I think we go through different things in our testimonies, give other people the opportunity to experience healing from themselves when they've never heard of someone else going through something that they've gone through. So it was, um, it changed my life. It still changes my life today just by being able to share that story from a place of boldness, because there's nothing that can change my mind based on what's happened and the evidence that has still stayed true over such a long period of time. Amen. Amen. Somebody that with a testimony is not at the mercy of somebody with a theory for sure. And you, you have, you have a powerful testimony as seeing God heal you of mental illness, which really, it seems that in this day and age is a bit of an epidemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, more and more people are being diagnosed with some sort of mental illness, whether it be bipolar or schizophrenia or uh, even just mild things, uh, ADHD. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people are taking that on as a as an identity, mm -hmm. as a as a as a curse. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, you are able to speak to people in a in a very personal way. I mean, it, everybody has their cell phones, and you are speaking to them through their cell phones. How is it that you are hearing from God what it is to say? Tell me about like wh how God speaks to you about what to pray or how to lead people with this. Yeah, it's a it's a really important question. And I think, you know, for me, anytime I pick up my phone or I do a lot of live streaming like every week during the week and we just do Bible studies and it gives me an opportunity to share my testimony. But I think even before picking up my phone or jumping on a live stream, it's getting into God's word. It's my own personal prayer time. I think, yeah. you know, sometimes people can see you pray and it's like, well, that's like your thing. It's like, no, that's what I do and what God's called me to do. But my personal relationship with him is the most important coveted time that I can have because it's during the Bible study in the morning or the praise and worship or the prayer where God will put something on my heart. And it could be as subtle as something as like, I want you to pray for mental health. I want you to pray for someone who feels like, uh, they want to give up. It's those subtle things that God will put on my heart. Even moments before I make a video, it's like, Lord, what? Because there's, I don't, I don't script my videos or anything like that. I just pick up my phone, but I'll sit there in a moment and I'll just say, mm -hmm. what do I feel led to pray about right now? And God will typically some, like most times just give me a word in the sense of how I'm feeling, but sometimes just a word, like someone who's dealing with loss or someone who's just 
ridded with a lot of anxiety. Or sometimes it will come from a place of I'm feeling a certain way because I'm still human and I go through all of the ups and downs. So it's those subtle uh, little cues in regards to when I spend time with him in the morning or it's before when I'm about to pick up my phone, just asking. That's the great thing about our relationship with the Lord. We can talk to him during any moment in time and he more than not answers or is always like prompting us with something. So that's how it's been for me most of the time. Yeah. You know, I want to thank you for so much for just being willing to be vulnerable and share your prayer life with the world and how you've been able to lead people as an ex- with an example of your own life. Uh, what encouragement would you give for people that feel that God is telling them to be more open with their prayer life and to help other people? How do you, how would you encourage them to just get started? Yeah. I'm so glad you asked that question because I think a testimony that I don't share as much as, um, as the healings or other things that have gone on are, is the conversations I've had with individuals who've reached out to me, who they were inspired by my video to start praying for others as well too. And God has blessed so many of them to reach the same amount of people as me, Hmm. kids who are 10 years younger than me to people in other countries who are reaching their entire country or, you know, hundreds of thousands of people in the countries, like the messages I've got from people who, who were in a difficult time. And then they just said, Hey, you gave like seeing you gave me permission to say, well, can I share my faith in that way? And the answer was always yes, because God has put a call on your life. And that call is to reach certain people that I will never reach And there's a unique message to each individual. Yeah, you might have tons of people out there who are praying, which I love seeing, but we all do it in a unique way. So if God's put it on your heart to share some part of your faith, prayer is one lens to do that. Or maybe it's just sharing a scripture or something like that. I love to tell people your testimony is one of the most powerful things that you can share. It's something that no one can take away from you. And I think that's a great place to get started too for anyone who wants to just be out there. But I've gotten countless messages from people who still do it today, like years and years later, who are going on and reaching, you know, the next generation as well as thousands of people a day just by being encouraged to do what I did. Not how I do it, even though we have the same message in the heart of uh, the love for the Lord and just the love for people. So it's uh, it's just, I think making that decision and then really spending time in prayer with the Lord to say, is this something that you want me to do? And just taking that step of faith and trusting that he's going to, um, you know, put you in a place uh, with your heart posture to reach whoever that might be. Cause one person is just as important as a million. Yeah. So your example has been able to encourage a lot of other people to start just praying on their phones, praying on, on camera, and they're seeing the people that God's called them to respond the same way. That's wonderful, Dane. That is really, really cool to see how God's doing that. And what what is the message that's on your heart today or the, or this season? Like, what is, what is the thing that, that is burning on your heart that, you know, I, I see behind you, you've got this picture of, you know, some Monopoly uh, uh, cards or whatever, and you know, success, but persistence is the one that is just kind of drawing me right now and just seeing like this persistence and not giving up. I feel like there's people that are wanting to give up, but that, that persistence, you know, the Holy Spirit persistence is something that, uh, that is, that is powerful right now. Um, that's just what I'm, what I'm, what I'm feeling right now, but what, what is it that God's speaking to you? And then I'm going to ask you to pray as well. Yeah. And I I appreciate you asking that question. I know you were asking me that earlier and I had to think about it for a moment, but as we were sitting here in conversation, I think this is something so true for me too. Uh, especially when you do something that's so public and open and people are always like watching and you have to always be on. It's, I go through those seasons every single year where it might be a month or two months or three months where things are extremely hard right? You just don't feel maybe even as connected to the Lord, or you just feel like you're in a little bit of a wilderness season. That happens to everyone. And I think during those times, especially when you're in those seasons, are some of the most important times because God not only refines your character, but also what's developed in you is, like you said with that word, and I'm so glad you brought that out, is your persistence, your obedience. I talk about this all the time. It's like being obedient to what God asked you to do. And even if you don't feel 100% or you have an off day, just to do those things that you started doing and to not give up on those, even if you maybe aren't seeing the success of what it used to be like, or you know, you're just being met with a little bit more resistance, I think 
that is something that I'm constantly thinking about because I go through those seasons too. And for those individuals who might be in that season right now where they want to give up, I think it's going back to the basics of what you did when you were feeling on fire, you know, because what tends to happen when we go through these seasons is maybe we stop spending as much time in the word, or maybe prayer becomes a little bit less important because you're so focused on yourself and how you're feeling when you're not focused on the one who can help you during that time. So my, to anyone who's watching who, who's in that season, I would just say coming, going back to like, what you initially were doing. Like, how is your relationship with the Lord? Are you still praying? Are you still, are you still on fire to get into the word? And if not, just go through the motions because we all go, go through those wilderness seasons. And during those times, so much of your character, your endurance, your persistence, and those things that are required for whatever, ha whatever God has next in your life, because he always has something, he needs to develop you to that next level to be prepared for. Amen. Amen. Would you pray for the people that have been watching? I know that that's, that's what you're probably best known for. Uh, so I don't want to miss this opportunity to ask you to pray for everybody that's been watching. Definitely. Of course. Heavenly Father, I just wanted to lift up each and every individual who is with us right now. And I, I just pray for anyone who is in a season where they might feel like they're in a wilderness. And Lord, I just pray that you speak to them. Give them a fresh revelation to understand that every season that this individual is going through has a seed of a blessing inside of it, even if they can't yet see it, Lord. And I just pray that you give them stamina and endurance to not focus just on themselves or how they're feeling, but to see what they can do for someone else, whether that's simply asking someone if they need prayer for anything, Lord, or if it's to just call someone up and, and ask them how they're doing, Lord. It's sometimes in those moments where you can help us be a blessing to someone else, even when we're going through something super difficult, Lord, I pray for anyone who is struggling with anxiety, worry, fear, any mental health challenge right now, Lord. And I speak against those things and tell them to go in the name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, where your spirit is, Lord, there is freedom. And your word says who the sun sets free is free indeed, Lord. And we just, we pray freedom for someone who does, who feels in bondage, Lord. We pray for someone who feels chains of addiction and we pray for you to break those, Lord. You have so much power, Lord, as we spend time in your presence. And I, I pray that they are called to your presence, Lord. I pray that they are called to spend time with you, to lift their hands up and just to surrender things that they've been holding on to, Lord, whether it's guilt, condemnation, shame, Lord, you heal all. And I just pray that you help this person understand that, Lord. Lord, help bring great people into their life, Lord, so they can be filled with others to carry that burden with, Lord, because we are not to do this alone. You are always with us, but you also have great people in store for us too. So I just pray for each individual, Lord. I pray for fresh revelation. I pray for healing from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Lord, and for wisdom to do what you've called them to do, Lord, in a way that always pleases you and impacts anyone you put in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Dane Camella, thank you so much for taking the time to join us uh, on Charisma. Of course. Thanks for having me.